Hello. Welcome back. We have just concluded uh, some of the aspects of the trigonometric functions of a single variable. So we need to go, for, I'm sorry, not single variable, single angle would be a better way of saying it. Now suppose I don't have a single angle, sometimes you come across sine of, uh, well, let's say a plus b, 45 plus 70. So suppose you had a question like, oh sorry, uh, we are still in topic 5 and trigonometry, I will write the title after I discuss some basics. See, suppose I want to find sine 75. Yeah. Some students will say, ah, that sine of 45 plus 30. I have seen this in students doing year 13. They will do sine 45 plus sine 30. Let's look at the calculator. What is sine 75? I have a calculator. So, sine 75 would be, of course, I need my glasses. Something like, you know, I remember the story of an absent minded professor. You know, people who are deep into their subjects, they don't have an awareness of what's happening around them. Absent minded professors, they call them. It's not a derogatory term, it shows how deeply they are involved in what they are doing. So the story goes, this professor went uh, one day, and every day when he goes to give his lectures at the university, he would forget this or that or that or this. And uh, his wife was uh, quite upset because he would forget. He got so deeply involved in his subject and his teaching and his students, he would forget things which he carried. So one day, and he, and he went and uh, he went by a scooter, and then he walked back home. The wife asked, "Where the scooter?" Oops, I forgot. I went by a scooter. I was thinking of some problem, so I just walked back, thinking of the problem and the solution. So the other day it was a cloudy day. So the professor had an extra or a yeah an extra lesson in the evening to help some weaker students for about half an hour, 45 minutes. So he, it was cloudy, so he carried his umbrella. He finished the lesson. He came back home and proudly told his wife, look, I didn't forget the umbrella today. She said, yeah, that's fine, but where is the baby? He had taken his son with him, thought he could play when he was teaching, and he, he was concentrating so much on the umbrella, I forgot about the baby. Same way, you see. I remember the calculator, but I forgot my glasses. Fortunately, it was here. Otherwise, I would be blind as a bat. Uh, coming back to this, so what is sine 75? Sine 75 is 0 0.9659. Uh, my pen is playing up. Let me use the red one for the moment. 0.9659. Sine 45 is 0 0.7071 plus 0.5. First and foremost, these two are not equal. Assuming you didn't bother finding sine 75, when you add these two, you get 1.2071, which is greater than 1. Sine, remember we discussed the graphs, sine can never ever be greater than 1. So it's not just like opening the brackets and multiplication. Then, what exactly is sine of 45 plus 30? Yeah, I might show you sine of 45 plus 30. You can ask me, sir, what about sine of uh, uh, 25 plus 121? Hmm? Or cos of 75 minus 15? So, to avoid this, we derive a general formula for sine of A plus B. That means you are talking of sum or difference of two angles. So we call it as a, a what shall we compound angles? That means two angles are added together.
compound angles. I want to look at sine of a plus b. So I'm going to spend this lesson trying to show you need not, I, I think students in India might have to know how to prove this formula. You should, for the, as far as the UK syllabus is concerned, you will not be asked to prove it. The proof I am showing is not the only proof. You can do it using transformation geometry. You can do it using matrices. But let's do basic geometry and see how to do it. Say I am considering a rectangle like this. That is the x-axis. That is the, the y-axis. And I am assuming the diagonal, of course, I have written the other way around. The diagonal is 1. Okay, the diagonal is 1. So, I have a rectangle like this. Yeah. Uh, this diagonal is 1. Let's say this is O, A, B, C. Uh, let me call this angle as, should I, you know, because normally the formula book says sine of A plus B. So, therefore, let me call that angle as A, then let me change it to O, L, M and N. What I do is, it's like this. Yeah. Something like this. Oops. Dot the diagonal there. I already know this angle is A and I rotate it like this. So, L will go up, M will go there. Yeah. So, something like that. So, now I will do it in such a way that the M, the point M goes on to the y axis. So, I am rotating it in such a way that uh, the point M is not exactly on y axis. That is the diagonal. And then uh, I am rotating. So, let me draw this diagram first and then I will put the diagonal. So, I am rotating it like this. That is O. That is L. That is M. That is N. And then that is this angle, let us say, is A. That angle is B. Remember that length is 1. So, do you agree that length is 1? Uh, sin B is opposite over 1. So, do you agree that is sin B, ML? Cos B is adjacent over 1. So, that is cos B. Right? Very good. Now, that is the angle A. I want to find out how high is M above the x axis. Right? So, what I will do will be I want to find that height. I will draw that. <coughs> I am going to draw this horizontal surface, vertical, I think I am being considered, no, I use horizontal as green, does not matter, variety is the spice of life. So, let us have that, let us say this is P, that is Q. So, do you agree, uh, to the height of P M will be sin of A plus B. So, can I say, from that diagram, that is a right angle, that is a right angle. Pm equals sine of A plus B. Yeah? Isn't it? Because that complete angle is A plus B, that is a right angle triangle. But Pm, suppose I were to PQ, let us call it as R. Can I say Pm is uh, PR plus RM? Correct? <coughs> Now, how are we going to find 
what is that length what is the length mr and what is the length pr the length pr is the same as the length so do you agree what what can you say about uh, this angle is a so that angle is 90 minus a that angle is 90 minus that angle because that's a right angle so that is 90 minus a so that is a that's a right angle so that angle is 90 minus a i'm sorry as usual i forgot to turn off my phone and uh, someone is calling me I'm sorry about it. Uh, I shouldn't be. Oh yeah, I know. Put it on mute. I normally do it again. Absent-minded professor. Forgot. Now let me draw each one of those triangles separately. So if I were to draw this, do you realize that is sine b, and that the angle a, that the point m, that the point r, that the point l. So, what is sin A from there? Sin A is RL over sin B. So, can I say RL equals sin A sin B? I need it. That's why I am putting it there. Now, cos A equal to uh, RM over sin B. So, can I say Rm equal to cos A sin B. Very good. So Rm equal to cos A sin B. You understand that so far? Very good. So I can rub this off. I have shown you how to do it. As I said, this is more a discussion. You don't have to know how to prove it. But students in India, if you are watching this, you perhaps might want to copy this because I am not going to write this proof you can find it in any textbook in of your 12th standard maths or uk students a level maths right now i have done that but i still haven't found what is rp rp is the same as lm so i can write this as lm plus rm i don't know i know rm but i don't know lm so let me draw that triangle there All right, this is cos B, that is the angle A, this is L, oh, that's LQ, not LM, that's Q, and that is O. <coughs> <coughs> so, what is sin A? Sin A equal to LQ over cos B. So, can you say LQ equal to sin A cos B, which is the same as PR. Very good. What is cos A? Cos A equal to OQ over cos B. So, can I say OQ equal to cos A cos B? All right. Very good. So I have got those that information. Now can you see the formula coming out there which you have seen in your formula book? So therefore I can say sine of A plus B is equal to LQ is sine A cos B plus RM. RM is cos A sine B. This is what you will see people from the UK in your formula book. That is how you can derive it. All right. But then, okay, sir, you did sin A cos B somehow by magic it worked. Does it work? So, therefore, cos of A plus B is cos A sin B. Is it sin A cos B minus cos A sin B or is it cos A sin B minus sin A cos B? What exactly is it? Let's see if we can find that out. I hope this pen writes. Okay. Now, cos of A plus B, again, 
I am drawing that triangle there. This is the angle A plus B and that is 1 and that is M P and that is O P. So, do you agree? Cos of A plus B is actually O P. Agreed? O P, that bit. But to get O P, can I write it as O Q? minus PQ. But PQ is the same as RL. So, OQ minus RL. Alright? Then comes the question, what is OQ? OQ is cos A cos B. minus RL is sin A sin B. There, that's the formula which you have learned, haven't you? So, that is how you get the formula for sin of A plus B and sin of A minus B. So, let me write down this compound angle formula. Similarly, you can find tan, but I will show you another way of doing it. So, sin of A plus B equal to sin A cos B plus cos A sin B. Very good. What is cos of A plus B is equal to cos A cos B is a minus, minus sin A sin B. So, you know the formula for sin of A plus B. And now you know how we get, of course, normally uh, in the class I show this, but I normally what I, what I used to do was not the latest syllabus, but in the old syllabus student had matrices. So, what I would do would be teach them matrices of rotation and work out this from there. It is much easier, makes more sense. But this is basic high school geometry and trigonometry. And you can still prove the formula, right? Good. So, I do not need all these things. I hope you have understood. Go through this again, the video, then you will click. You know, the advantage of doing this instead of remembering the formula, oh, sorry, rub the wrong. So, I will talk as a right. So, instead of remembering the formula, if you go through this method, at least you will not commit the error of sin of A plus B as sin A plus sin B. You know it cannot be that, then you will take care to look at the formula book to find the answer. As I said, you do not need to know how to prove it. I am talking of students in the UK. I do not know about American syllabus, people who are doing uh, high school maths or AP maths, you might have to know how to prove it, but I think it is all multiple choice there. So, I am not too sure. Anyway, uh, I have shown you now how this is useful to you. Uh, ah, again, I was about to rub the, what is wrong with me? I am rubbing off everything. Now, fine. As usual, we have found a formula for sine, we have found a formula for cos, what about a formula for tan? Okay. Now, do you realize tan of A plus B is sine of A plus B of course, I could use the same triangle and do it. I do not want to do it that way. I will do it another way because I want this method I am going to use the trick in question. That is why I am doing it this way. So far, so good. Okay. What is sin of A plus B? We just now proved it. Sin A cos B plus cos A sin B divided by cos A cos B minus sin A sin B. Correct? You know, we math students and teachers, we are very fair people. <coughs> we must treat people the same way. So, look, sin, poor sin has sin and cos. The sin did not have a choice. So, he has a sin. A cos has a cos. So, a tan by logic should have a tan. Right? So, I do not have a tan. What is tan? 
sin over cos. So to get tan A, I must divide by cos A, sin A by cos A. To get tan B, I must divide sin B by cos B. So what I will do is, I will divide every term by cos A cos B. Every time, remember in a fraction, you can't just divide one term, otherwise the value will change. So, I am dividing every term by cos A cos B on the assumption there is that cos A is not 0, cos B is not 0. Very good. Here, you realize cos B and cos B cancel. Sin B, oops, cos A and cos A cancel, sorry, not sin B. Here, all of them cancel giving you 1, nothing cancel. So, sin A over cos A is tan A plus sin B over cos B is tan B over, that's 1 minus sin over cos is tan A, sin B over cos B is tan B. Ah, I am so happy because poor tan was floundering here with sin and cos. We said, no, no, don't worry, we'll help you. Tan should be in tan. We'll get you a formula in tan. So, tan of A plus B is, oh, why am I writing it in red? I need to keep, reserve the red for something else. So, tan of A plus B is tan A plus tan B over 1 minus tan A tan B. Now, this is for the benefit of students doing further maths. When you do complex numbers, sometimes you come across, you have to find an expression for tan 7a. So, you got a sin 7a divided by cos 7a. Then, you divide numerator and denominator by the highest power of cos found in the question. That way, you will get all in terms of tan. The same technique which we use here will be used in for the math. That's the reason why I did it this way, just to help some of you who might be doing for the maths. Okay? Right. Remember, I told you we math students and math teachers want to be fair. What do you mean by fair? So, Mr. Mahana, you have proved for A plus B. What will happen if I have A minus B? What do I do? Nothing wrong. Let's look at sine of A minus B. Can I write this as sine of A plus minus B? So, it will be sine A cos minus B plus cos A sine minus B. Remember, minus B is in the fourth quadrant. If it is in the fourth quadrant, cos should be positive, sine should be, or in other words, sine of minus A is minus sine A, cos of minus A is cos A. So, this is sine A, cos B, no change. My sine of minus B becomes minus cos A, sine B. Similarly here, Cos of A minus B will be cos A, cos of minus B, minus sin A, sin of minus B, sin of minus B is a minus, so that becomes a plus. Tan of A minus B, <coughs> sorry, is tan A plus tan of minus B over 1 minus tan A, tan of minus B. Tan of minus B is minus tan B, so tan A minus tan B, 1 plus tan A tan B. So, instead of writing the whole formula, I, that's why I said I have kept the red for something else, reserved. So, if this is a minus, that will be a minus. Look, minus is below, minus is below. If that is a minus, here it is a plus. So, if it is plus, it is minus. If it is minus, it is plus. If this is minus here, there it is minus, there it is plus. This formula you find in your formula book. That's how it's a brief lesson on how to find the
formula for compound angles. Okay. I think I will stop at this stage. And in the next lesson, I will, I will leave this here. And uh, remember, but when I am using it in the next lesson, I will be using uh, what we did in how to find angles of a triangle, you know, the, how to find the ratios, if you know sign, how to find cos and tan, quadrants, solving equations, all those things will come back, right? Again, a repetition of, so as I told you yesterday, remember I told you prepare a memory card or a sheet of paper where you have a trick formula. Please add these and I am going to refer to those. I am not going to write it. I will quote what I had told you and you must be able to relate. If you can't relate, go back to the previous videos or go back to your teacher's notes and write down and keep them for a while. Once you get used to, you can bin them. Okay. I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Hello. I want to take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks. I would like to thank Vivid Innovations Private Limited and Commerce Forum for uh, so generously giving up their uh, studio and the facilities and the services of their uh, technicians to record all these videos for free. I think that needs to be acknowledged and appreciated. Thank you very much. And my special thanks to Mr. Nitin Mahadevapa, Mr. Nishant Guruswami, and Mr. Sadan Kumar DN for all their help and assistance in getting these videos ready, uploaded, and launched. Thank you very much.